So thanks for having me. Um, I am, just to give you a little background on myself, so I love talking about this stuff, and if you've talked to me a little bit already, I've talked to a few people, uh, you know that I have a big passion for helping teams work better. And so just a little background for me to give you the context of where I'm coming from. So I've been a developer for quite a while, um, since the early 90s, basically. So, uh, but I've been doing this for a while, and about 10 years ago, I started um, leading teams. It wasn't on purpose necessarily, it was more from the standpoint of, I really wanted to help the team, uh, protect the team, if you will, be there to stand in between the team having a hard understanding of what the business needed and the business having a hard time communicating to the team. So I was one of those people that was able to communicate um, and get that bridge between the two teams uh, to, to be there. And so what was interesting though is I was like, okay, this is cool. I'm, you know, felt like I was doing my job, doing good things. And then the next thing you know, I ended up turning into that very bad leader as well, the one I was trying to protect them from. And what was interesting is I had discovered something that I wanna share with you today uh, about our instincts. But before we go there, I do wanna share with you a story about a small company that you may be familiar with. So <clears throat> what's interesting is this company, Southwest Airlines, you're probably familiar with. If not, uh, they're one of my favorite airlines. I highly recommend them to fly if you're gonna go flying somewhere. And when they were a regional air airline, um, I was told this story a few years ago, so I'm not sure when, the, when this meeting happened, but they were a regional airline, and they had the entire leadership come together to talk about, as a company, what could they do to empower their teams, to encourage their teams, to give that one principle for their teams to kind of rally around with their discretionary time. What was that one thing that they could all work towards? Uh, I believe the question was phrased similar to this, where they're talking about what metric could they do to help the team kind of understand their you know, discretionary time, they've got some free time, what can they do to help the team grow? Because their goal was to obviously beat the competition. So what was that question? What was the answer to that question that they came up with? And normally this is where I would have the audience interact, but obviously we're short on time. So I'll just give you the answer. So what they came up with was time in the air which kind of makes sense probably, right? Like a lot of people, when they answer this, they'll say customer service, like what's the one thing that Southwest is known for? What do they focus on? But it was actually the time in the air. And this is still to this day, the only airline that I've ever seen where I've seen a pilot come out of the cockpit as I'm leaving the plane and go back and help the flight attendants clean up garbage on the floor. Uh, so again, they've been able to instill in, in, in their entire organization this principle of, we need to make sure that what we're doing is working towards this one goal. So that was cool for Southwest, that's awesome, you know, but I don't work for an airline, and so I was a little discouraged by this because I work with knowledge teams, like teams that work with knowledge work. It's work that's normally hidden, it's really hard to determine kind of what we're working on a lot of times, and so I was a little discouraged. And so um, in the last three to four years, I've become a, a very avid student of Lean and Agile. I'm still learning a lot is the way I put it for sure, and um, as, uh, as I was getting into that uh, and learning more about that, I wanted to find that metric that would be applicable for knowledge work teams. And so what I've, come, what I've come to realize is one of the metrics that is tracked in Kanban systems is called flow efficiency. So if you're not familiar with flow efficiency, the simple definition that I use is basically determining how much time of the total time that was spent on an item was you actually, or your team actually adding value to that item. So not the time that it was sent there waiting for approval, not the time that it was sitting there for you know, some other blocker, if you will, but the time that you were actually adding value to that item. And uh, then the next question I usually get is, okay, well, how much, you know, what is that like? How, how, what's the average in America or whatever? Well, unfortunately, I don't, I don't have a uh, uh, number for that, but uh, fortunately, about two to three years ago, I think it was, they had a uh, study that was done in Germany and they took all the top 500 teams, which is essentially the S&P 500, but in Germany, and they measured their flow efficiency. So since we do have a couple more minutes here, I wanted to ask, does anyone want to guess what that efficiency would have been? Where flow efficiency is, if it's a low number, it's a bad number, so you're not as efficient, obviously, as a higher number, you'd be more efficient as a team. Does anyone want to take a guess real quick before we move on? Any brave souls out there? Five? Five? It's really close. So they came back with four to six percent. Usually I get people guessing 25 percent, 50 percent, you know, whatever. Uh, but we're, we're a lot lower on that than we think. 
But then the next question I get is, well, that can't be possible, Paul. I am busy all the time, right? Like, I'm super busy. I'm always doing something. I'm always, you know, working on something. I come into work every day, and there's always something to do. It's not like I'm sitting here without work to do. So what does that mean? Well, that's what this today's big idea is about, and I only have time to share one of them with you. But this is what I love doing, is helping teams understand that their natural instincts for how they work is actually causing more delay in how you get your work done. And so that's where you want to start learning how you can um, fight against those natural instincts and improve how you can um, get in the state of flow, if you will, with your work. And that natural instinct that we're talking about today is busyness. So if you live and if you're a resident of the United States of America, and even if you're not, but if you are, I would challenge that your association, so we associate things with words. Again, again, I don't have a whole lot of time to go into that. From a psychological standpoint, though, we associate different things where in each, uh, ev eventually words and things we kind of interact with in an emotional state, if you will. And so that association with busy, I would say, is unhealthy. And here's some examples of what you may feel when you're talking about being busy in your job. So if any of these statements kind of resonate with you, kind of put that in the back of your mind and think about that because I don't think the thing, the tip that I'm going to give you today is going to be able to be used in your team until you start dealing with your own personal unhealthy association with the term busy. And I'll prove that to you. So what do you think is easier? Do you think doing this would be easier than this? I'll show you again. Do you think this one is easier to do than this one? Which one's easier? Does anyone think this one's easier? No, no brave souls, okay. Yeah, I would agree, this one is easier. Well, why don't you do that with your work? Right, why don't we do that with our work? So today what I wanna tell you is, I want to introduce a concept to you you may be familiar with if you study any of the Kanban stuff, it's one of the, ten, you know, one of the principles that we talk about when we're teaching Kanban. Um, and that is limiting your work in progress. And you may immediately go, well, there is no way in heck my boss is gonna let me bring up any term around limiting anything, because we're always full, full force, 100% all out, we gotta get this done, we, we don't have time to wait. And that's where you, know, you could say, Paul told you that it was good to limit your work in progress because you're gonna get more work done, but you know, we don't know each other that well, so you don't have to take my word for this. You can actually take the word of a lot of people that are way smarter than me, that have studied this and come up with a law that's used throughout the Kanban community, and it's called Little's Law. Now, if the Little's Law police was here today, they would probably take me in back and handcuff me with the definition I'm gonna give you, but I'm trying to give it to you in a very simple term, because in Kanban, the thing I love about Kanban, the most important thing for me is, is that it's very simplistic and approachable. Many people come up to me and go, oh, it's just a glorified tic-tac-toe board, what's the big deal? But it's actually the, that simplicity to me that's so powerful because you can get so much more sophistication out of your team the further deeper in the pool you get, if you will. Um, so in the shallow end is what we're going today, so bear with me as we go over just a real quick high-level definition of Little's Law, which is if your team's busy, do more. If your team is overburdened or really, really busy, do less. Either way, you're actually going to produce more. And that's a law. That's not something that Paul's coming up with. That's people that are way smarter than me. Um, the thing I've learned the most as I've started, studied and learned the lean community and Kanban community is people in the Kanban community are very academic. They are like super smart. So just take that and I promise you, especially if you want to go do some research on Little's Law or if you want to catch me in the mixer afterwards, I'd love to talk about this. I'm always a fan of uh, talking about Kanban. So I want to leave you with one more thing. This is my favorite quote. It comes from the book Essentialism by Greg McCown. So I'm going to read it to you because I think it's that powerful. The word priority came into the English language in the 1400s. It stayed singular for the next 500 years. Let that sink in. So I want to leave you with one last thought, and that is I found that many development teams, especially knowledge work teams, have difficulty um, delivering software in a predictable fashion, especially if management only knows the carrot or the stick mentality. Like that's the only tools they have in their tool belt. And so that's why I want to say that high performing teams are teams that have learned a language on how to fight against their um, natural instincts that create delay in their system. And they've been able to use that common language to focus their team on flow and how to improve the flow of their team. So as you go out today, think about those instincts. Um, I can only cover one today, obviously, but 
Uh, my name is Paul. I teach Kanban. I love it. Uh, I've been doing development for a while as well. But yeah, if you have any questions right now, we have maybe 30 or 15 seconds or something like that. So yeah. And time. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I went long. Sure. So um, one way that I've done in the classes that I teach, so I teach a full day class of this, um, and one, one thing that I do is I do activities, which is not obviously necessarily you can do, you can, hey boss, come over here, we want to do this cool activity to teach you something you don't know. Um, that doesn't really go over well. However, if you're able to introduce them in that way, maybe send, I can send you some videos on some of the uh, activities I've seen that teach people like why multitasking, and it's really mind blowing. Like literally your natural instinct is to do a bunch of things at once and you think it's gonna be faster and it's not. However, in your specific scenario, what I would recommend is trying an experiment. So take an approach and go to your boss and say, hey look, for the next sprint, could we just implement whip limits? Well, what does that mean, Paul? Like, what do you mean by whip limits? Well, let's decide for each activity that we do on our system. Maybe you start with a Kanban board, which literally is, that's the thing I love about Kanban. It works on top of whatever you do today. You do Scrum, you do Waterfall, you do whatever. You can put Kanban on top of it because it's literally the capstone that fits on top of what you do today. So you just start with a Kanban board, you start with some whip limits on top of that just to reduce the amount you're working on at once. And, and try it out for a couple of weeks, maybe one sprint, maybe two sprints. But you have to follow those limits. You can't just have them up there and then not follow them, right? And you can even have those conversations when the boss comes to you and goes, hey, I need you to work on these things. Like, well, we've met the whip limit and we're in this experiment phase. Can we not work on it right now because of that? And you push it off that way. Um, I've seen that work on teams, you know, because again, that experimentation mindset can be helpful for you to try it out and see if it works for your team. Yeah. Any other questions? I know we're... One more. So it seems to me that okay. So I believe you. If you if you do this, you're gonna get more throughput. But throughput is not the same thing as value. So what are we missing there? Because when you gave the definition of coefficient, it has to do with value, not necessarily just throughput. Well, it depends on what your, yeah, what your throughput is, right? Absolutely. You need to make sure that as your team, you're focusing on what is the next most valuable thing for your client. So you're absolutely right. If you're just pushing through things because you're pushing through things and you don't understand how that applies to your customer, you, I would definitely be on the front end of that. You want to make sure whatever you're delivering is valuable. The same way if you're using sprints and scrum, right? If your sprint that you're delivering, it's not valuable to your customer, then why are you doing it? Right? So there, yeah, absolutely. It's not just about being fast and efficient, but it's also about focusing the team on that customer, for sure.